I thought it would be fun to create a new updated 1099 training for you because there are some changes. So let's get in. I'm going to share with you what to expect if you don't know. There's been some updates and changes to the form. So there's not only the 1099, there's now the 1099 NEC. So let's talk about how to prepare for your year end with some updates that you're going to need to know. So let's go through some just basics about changes and then we'll jump straight into QuickBooks. So the first thing to know is as of the 2020 tax year, there is a new form that replaces the old 1099 miscellaneous as far as only box seven is concerned. In other words, the amount that was formerly box seven on the 1099 miscellaneous as of 2019 and prior is now box one on the 1099 NEC. There's some other changes as well, which you can find out more about later. One thing to know is that the 1099 NEC is specifically reporting non-employee compensation, so subcontractors, independent people, whereas any other compensation is still on the 1099 miscellaneous. I did a whole training on this inside for my Commons QuickBook community and my Simplified. So if you're looking for more training, that's a great place to start. But I wanted to give you at least some of what you'll need to be able to get those things answered. So let me go in and share with you my screen and I will share with you QuickBooks desktop and online so that you can see the adjustments in there. The first thing to know is when you're setting up your vendors, as always, which I've talked about before, you're going to go to your vendor, vendor center, but we want to always start here. I have, this is my sample file. So here's the Candace camp, for example, I'm going to go over here to the pencil and you are going to go, you're going to make sure that the vendor name, the company name, your address is all accurate. Then you're going to go under tax settings. This is the key. You want to make sure that you mark it as eligible for 1099 if the person is eligible and you are going to make sure they have a tax ID number. Now, this is similar to what we've always done for taxes, where the big change is going to happen is when we start linking and matching up our vendors. So you're going to go under vendors, forms, print slash e-file. This used to talk about the wizard. It's no longer says wizard. Now it says print e-file your 1099 forms. It says, are you ready to prepare? And you hit yes. Now, the first time I click this, it asked me to do a backup of my QuickBooks. So you may need to do that. If it, your form doesn't look like this, when you do it, you're going to want to make sure you go under the window, uh, under the help and make sure you've updated your QuickBooks. OK, then you're going to decide whether you need the NEC, which is for independent contractors or non-employee compensation, or you may still need the 1099 miscellaneous, which is where you're like your rental income, your royalties, all the things that existed before in the form still exist. Then you're going to click get started. I recommend starting with the 1099 NEC and then doing the miscellaneous second. I recommend setting both forms up and going through the process that I'll show you with mapping and then actually processing the forms later. You can e-file or you can mail them in. If you have over 250 forms, you're going to still need to e-file. The cutoff date for 2021 is February 1st for the 1099 NEC. For the 1099 miscellaneous, you have to have it to the recipients by February 1st. It's normally January 31st, but because it lands on a holiday this year, you get an extension to February 1st. The 1099 miscellaneous has to be mailed into the IRS or electronically filed, but if you're mailing it March 1st, if you're electronically filing it by March 31st. OK, for the 1099 NEC, you need to both mail it in e-file and give it to the recipients by February 1st this year. So you can go ahead and click on get started and then you're going to go through and it's going to have all of the vendors that you have selected are eligible. That's why we started with that screen first. So that was under vendors, vendor center, everyone who is eligible, you're going to make sure you click on the pencil go to the tax and make sure they're eligible. Okay. That's what we started with. Then you're going to, so it's going to have all of them here. You can clear them all. You can check mark just the ones you want. You can also select them all as well. Then you're going to click continue and you're going to have all of your information in here. If you need to make any changes, you can click on any of the boxes, double click, and you can 
make adjustments to anything that you need to adjust. If you need to adjust the address, anything like that, you can. I recommend having them give you a W-9 filled out. So it's gonna have their contact information as well as their mailing address, their either tax ID number, whether that's a social security or an EIN, they'll give you that and you'll have all of the data. You wanna keep that in your file. Once you make sure all of this is accurate, you're gonna click continue. And this is where all the magic happens. This is really, we've always had mapping here, but this is more important than ever to have your things mapped correctly. Now, if every category in here, you want it to automatically go to box one. You can check mark that. I do not recommend it. What I recommend doing instead is going through every account that you have over here to the left and mapping it to whether it's going to show up on the NEC or not. Remember, NEC is for non-employee compensation. So these accounts to the left, if you're wondering like, where do these populate from? Whenever you are entering a bill or writing a check and you're in here writing a check, when you select the account that you want it to go to, so let's just say the Canvas Camp, for example, that we have as a vendor and say we're gonna write a check for a thousand dollars. Oops, let me fix that. When you're over here, and you're selecting where you want it to write to. So maybe you're, you're, you have subcontractor as your expense category, cost of goods, or maybe you have professional fees. And these are all the people that you need to give a 1099 to. It's up to you to pay on how you set up your QuickBooks, but you're gonna wanna make sure that anybody who gets the 1099 NEC that you know what categories you're using here. That's the trick, okay? The account that you're using, whether you're entering it here or in a bill, you are going to find it to the left. So if you say professional fees, oh, yep, that's one of them. That's anything that goes there is considered non-employee compensation. Maybe you have a professional fee or something like that, maybe labor. You're going to say, oh, yep, that's everybody. So you're going to need to know where those go to, okay? So you're going to go through, maybe it's subcontractor goes there as well, okay? Professional fee, subcontractor, whatever. So you go through each of these. You decide on every line item whether or not it is omitted, meaning it's not going to show up on the 1099, doesn't qualify, or yes, that is what I need in box one, or if you have federal withholding that you withheld or state withholding, you'll need to allocate the mapping to each of those as well. So you'll go through and you'll pick each one, whether it applies or not. Now, if it's like, say, rent expense, you will not be able to choose miscellaneous box until you go to the miscellaneous 1099. Mine is showing up just because I did a training on this before, all right? So over here is how it's gonna sort which accounts are gonna show up in your list. You can choose all accounts and that's every single account that you have in your whole chart of accounts if you want. And you can sort it by type so that you can easily go through and find it or you can sort it by what accounts are gonna show on the 1099. In other words, where anyone who's been paid in this prior screen that you've selected, it's gonna show up those accounts that were used in those examples, okay? Mine show a lot of different ones just because I do a lot of different training with the different people that are in these examples that I've created here. Okay, once you've mapped every category and whether or not it should be considered going to the NEC, it's either yes or no, basically. If it's no, it's omit. If it's yes, it goes to one of these three boxes. Then you're gonna click continue. If you need to know more about the threshold, you need to know it's a $600 threshold, you can, you can check that. Don't worry about the threshold as much. You don't need to decide if somebody should get it. You just need to decide if this expense category or this category that you used in QuickBooks, if it qualifies for the NEC or not. And then you're gonna click continue, okay? You're gonna have payments that are excluded you're gonna have payments are included and these are excluded. You can also look at your details here. Now, something important to know is if you pay through a merchant, a third party service, like you use your credit card or PayPal, because those people, when they set their accounts up, let them know, they give them their tax ID number. You don't need to provide a 1099 to anybody that is using a third party merchant provider. So if you ever pay through your debit card or credit card, they're gonna get a special 1099K. So if when you're paying these and anybody you paid with credit card is not showing up, that's okay. Those are not something that you need to worry about. They have it somewhere else. So when you get to the next screen, when you click continue and you get here and you see, okay, 
yep, that's under the dollar amount, plus technically Ace Hardware doesn't qualify um, as an independent contractor. Then you'll go to say Candace Camper. Okay, she doesn't qualify. What are those transactions? And you'll go in and you can always look up all the transactions that were processed inside your vendor center for that vendor. You can double click on the checks and go, oh yeah, that was payroll stuff. That's not 1099. Double click on transactions that happen. Oh yeah, that's a journal entry. That's a reversing entry. That doesn't impact, that's an adjustment. I'll double click on the next one and you go through, oh yeah, we paid for a note payable. That's not on the 1099 in EC and you'll go through. So just because on here it shows excluded, you can go back and make sure that it's not mapped to the wrong account or didn't go to the wrong place. If after you verify that, if everything's accurately mapped and you feel confident that your one person or your 10 or your hundred, whatever it is, is accurate, then you're gonna click continue, okay? So this is just verifying who really gets the NEC form, the 1099 or not. So you have two choices. You can either print your 1099 by clicking print. Make sure you pick the correct calendar year for what you're looking for. You'll have who it's for and you can print. I do recommend that the first time that you print it, you grab a white sheet of paper, mark an X, stick it in and test it so you can figure out where your form applies. It's gonna be just like a laser check. After you've printed all five versions that you're going to be giving, the red one is for, I can, I can show you that in a minute, but the red one is for IRS. Then you have two for the vendor or the recipient. One is also for the state and then one is for you to receive as well. Okay. So you're going to print all five versions. You just click print and you're going to print it five times on five different forms. And then you're going to print your 1096. Okay. The 1096 is the summary. You will need a 1096 for each version of your 1099 form. So if you have the 1099 NEC, you're going to have that and it's going to have its own 1096. And if you have 1099 miscellaneous, it will have its own 1096. Okay. So you're going to go through that. If you want to e-file, you'll click e-file. It will connect to the internet. It'll click connect to QuickBooks, which I'll show you. You're going to put in, there is a cost. It's $2.90 per form. You're going to put in how many forms you have. So there's two 1099s to a form typically, but in this, um, when you print them on this, you're just going to count each individual business that you're providing a 1099 for will be considered a form. So how many of those do you have? You're going to select that and then you'll move forward with entering it. So they know how many that you'll have. Okay. The 1096, you don't have to worry about when you file electronically. So that's the process if you are a desktop user. So this is your 1099 miscellaneous. You can read all about it if you want to know like, okay, can you give me more details about everything, which forms, what boxes, all of that. You can get more details at the IRS website. If you want to kind of look at what the 1099 form looks like, this is what the new 1099 NEC looks like. This is the box one for the non-employee compensation. Um, and then you would go through, make sure that if you, there's two to a page, if you're printing them, make sure that you void any that are, you're not using the form, or if you need to correct them, that you mark this as corrected. This is the A copy that goes to IRS. You have the state copy if you need to provide it to the state for your independent non-employee compensation form. Then you have the B, which is going to go to the recipient. You are also going to have the copy two, which is also going to go to the recipient. That's why I said you're going to print the same thing five times, just on different sheets that go to different places. And then this is your copy. Make sure that you take a photocopy of the A, as well as your 1096 that you filled out that you signed as well. So you'll mark whether it's an NEC or a miscellaneous, which QuickBooks will do when you print it out directly as well. So that's what you're going to do for your 1099 NEC. When you're all done, we'll hit save and close. And then let's go back in and talk about the 1099 miscellaneous. So the 1099 miscellaneous is right here. You're going to click get started. It will also have your same list of ones that you said are eligible for the 1099. You're going to click continue. And if you want to link up now your rent expense, any of the things that go into these list of boxes, there's 15. If you have anything that categorizes into here, whether it's rent, if you have crop insurance proceeds, if you have you know gross proceeds from an attorney, all these different things 
Um, if you want to know more about it, we did a training on that, um, which I mentioned before. That's something we do more inside Commons QuickBooks or our QuickBooks Simplified community. So rent expense, you click here, you go through. If they don't, if these things don't belong, you want to make sure that they all select as omitted. Anything that was originally in here that you chose for your non-employee compensation for the NEC, it will also say it. you cannot change it in here because you did that in another screen. But it does show it just like it showed rent expense when we were in the 1099 NEC. I recommend actually mapping everything and then going back and printing your form. So once you feel good about everything you selected, you're going to click continue. You'll have view payments or exclude just like before. Click continue. You can print and look at those reports. If your 1099 miscellaneous, anything you have qualified, it will let you know. It's included will be on the left, excluded or unmapped will be to the right. You'll notice that none of these technically qualifies. We didn't have rent in this example. But if you do, or any of the other boxes, they should show up here. You're going to go ahead and click continue, go through, print your forms that you need, which I didn't have any, or 1096 if you have one as well, or e-file, okay? The same things apply as far as if you're paying rent or any of the categories for with your credit card, they won't show up either. Now, something you may want to know is if you go here to vendors, 1099 forms, if you just want to see like who qualifies and what it is, if you go under 1099, review 1099 vendors, if you click here, you'll see every vendor you have, whether you say they're eligible or not, and if they have a tax ID number, what is their billing information? So that's a great report to pull. You can also pull the summary and the detail here. And if you want to order your forms from Intuit, you can order your forms directly from Intuit if you're not going to do the e-file. So that is the update on how to process your 1099 forms. I will do an additional video for how to process them if you are using QuickBooks on the line. If you're looking for the online version, click on the link above and you can find that there's a separate process. So we'll create a video for each. Thank you for being here. Let me know below what was your favorite part? Was this like, aha, you can now handle your 1099s? Let me know that as well. And if you enjoy my tips and tricks, make sure you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and leave us a comment. Let us know what is your favorite. We will be doing workshops starting this month in January. So if you're wanting to learn more about QuickBooks and you want more support and help, feel free to join us on one of our workshops. You can go to canvascamper.com forward slash workshop or click on the link here. <laughs> you will see it. And I look forward to seeing you inside our next video. I hope this helped you and go out there and crush your 1099s. Hopefully it's not so overwhelming. Just know you need the 1099 NEC for all of your original box seven that you used to do on your 1099 miscellaneous. That's just no longer there. Have an amazing day, and I look forward to seeing you inside our next tip and trick.